Good evening, everyone, and welcome to CyberTrack. I am Meghna, your host for today. So, for those of you who are new here, CyberTrack is an uh, is a cyber CyberTrack is an enterprise risk management community with over ten thousand plus members globally. Our topic for today's CF Thursday session is incident management and business continuity planning, and our speaker for today is Mr. Shailendra Shivasta. Mr. Shailendra. Shivasta is a certified cyber security professional with 15 years of experience in various IT sectors like telecom, marketing, research, BFSI, retail, including major working with companies like WNS, Cape Gemini, Tech Mahindra, and Reliance Industry. Welcome, sir, and the platform is all yours. Thank you so much, Megna. Uh, please let me know if my screen is visible to everyone. Uh, no, sir. Right now, it's not visible. Is it fine now? Yeah, it's visible now. Hello. Yes, sir. My voice is going. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So, shall I start? Yes, sir. Definitely. So, friends, sometimes. things go wrong in the world of information security even though we spend a significant amount of time uh, my slides are coming correct right i mean because i can see some lag hello begna is there yeah 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 sir yes it's okay. it's fine we can see the slide okay so even though we spend a significant amount of time analyzing risk and implementing security controls those controls are not still full proof information security manager must be prepared to handle security incident that arise in their organization in a manner that contains the damage determine the root cause of the incident resolve the issue and recover normal operation as quickly as possible hi i am shailendra shivastav and i would like to welcome you all in today's session of incident management and business continuity planning specifically we'll cover all the three topic exclusively like incident management overview developing and incident response plan and business continuity business continuity i would like to mention here that some or full content of this session may help you to be a cyber aware being a cyber savvy and help you to understand the security concepts while preparing for any cyber security exams like cism cisa cissp etc cism you can find this in domain 4 which is information security incident management and cissp you can find under security operations Uh, just give me a second guys uh, let me just move my uh, this pop up call set yeah all right guys let's get rolling so the manager's role in incident response information security manager plays an important role in the incident response process throughout this session we'll be discussing many of the nitty gritty details of responding to an information security incident we'll cover the process of identifying an incident the way that you i think some there is lag i mean hello my voice is coming clear yes sir okay everything is fine all right so we'll be discussing many of the nitty gritty details of the responding to the information security incident we will cover the process of identifying an incident the ways that you can contain damage mitigate the effect of an incident and recover your organization's operations unless you are a part of a very small team information security manager won't likely be performing many of the actions and so on but be responsible for leading the response effort incident throws an organization into chaos you often find yourself in an environment where technical issues are occurring 
customers are demanding a status report law enforcement is knocking on the door and there are may and there may be a media report containing accurate or inaccurate information now during the early hour of an incident there are more questions than answers and everyone in the organization is looking to information security manager to provide these answers from the ceo to the help desk team everyone is reaching out leading to busy phone calls and full mail box now as a security manager your most important role at this point is to create order in the midst of the chaos and shield your team from its effect you need to let incident responder get their work done it's extremely important that you don't add to the chaos yourself by interrupting the response effort you have spent already a lot of time and energy by selecting a strong team and providing them with a, the training that they need to res respond to an incident and this is a time to trust in them and let them do their things of course you are still the leader you should keep in close touch with the technical leads or the incident response effort they will look to you for important decision and guidance during the response you will need to continue to wear the dual hats of information security manager you need to help the organization achieve its security objective but you also need to balance those with the realities of the business environment there are no time where this balance is more important than during the security incident response effort another important role of information security manager is to ensure that incident response effort is functioning hand in hand with the organization's business continuity and disaster recovery process friends i just want to know like my pace is correct do i need to slow down or my pace is i need to increase or something megna would you like to confirm on that on this yes sir just a second uh so there's a little bit of lag but i think it's fine okay. apart from that it's fine all right is there any question for me so far no sir all right so i am moving to creating an incident response team first one of the most important tasks that you will undertake in your incident response program is building and staffing your incident response team this team will likely need to be available on a 24 by 7 basis and you should primarily back up personnel assigned to cover their vacations as well as extending period of operations incident handling is wonderful professional development opportunity and help team member keep their technical skill sharp some of some of this group that should be represented in your incident response team include management information security personnel technical subject matter expert such as database administrator developer system engineers and virtualization expert legal counsel public affairs and marketing staff human resource team member and your organizations physical security team including the right team member is critical to building the relationships that you will need during an incident you won't necessarily need to activate all team members for any given incident but each of these group should have representative trained and ready to participate before an incident strike as you build out your incident response team you may find that your organization lack some of the capability to handle security incident for example in this context for example you might discover that you don't have 
forensic capabilities within your team to conduct investigation in support of incident response effort in those cases you may wish to consider retaining an external incident response provider to assist friends here i would like to mention that considering the third party or third party vendor for any such incident is maybe one of the good decision uh, considering the uh, uh, financial aspect and another important tip is you do not want to try and locate and negotiate a contract with a provider in the middle of the incident that's not the right time to do these kind of negotiation when incident is already going through plan in advance and get the paperwork in place to use a provider immediately when you discover a problem your incident response team will be a crucial aspect as you work to address the impact of security incident be sure you take the time now to design and train your team so that they are ready to respond in the event of actual cyber security incident now before we talk about cyber security incident response we need to have a common understanding of what constitute a security incident let's talk about some common vocabulary used by cyber security incident handler we'll talk about events adverse events and incidents let's see what is security events friends a security event is any occurrence in a system network or application that may have security implications there is no requirement that a security event be malicious or dangerous if a user attempt to log into a system that is a security event even if a log in which uh, uh, it was a successful and authentic then that is also a, a security event if a firewall accepts or deny a connection request that's a security event if a user access a web page or a file on a server you guess it correct that's a security event every organization experience thousands or even millions of security events each day next is adverse security events adverse security events are a subset of security events that have some negative consequences a user logging into a system with his or her, or her assigned account would be a security event but it won't be an adverse event however a user logging into a system with someone else account would be an adverse event there are many other type of adverse events activities that cause a network sector failure disclosure of sensitive information the loss of critical data or infection by malware would all constitute adverse security event security incidents friends security incident are adverse security event that have either caused or threatened to cause a violation of the organization's security policy if an attacker steal sensitive information and provide it to a competitor that's clearly a security event incident some adverse event may not rise to the level of security event security incident i'm repeating some adverse event may not rise to the level of the security incident however for example if someone launch a botnet attack against your web server that might not rise to the level of the security incident unless it actually affect the availability of your website you can think of this as a set of nested definition every security incident is an adverse security event and every adverse security event is a security event however we can have a security events 
that are not adverse events and adverse events that are not incidents that is important to know and understand that these term as you develop and implement your organization cyber security engineering response plan we generally discuss only the adverse events only that do rise to the level of security incident i need to make one more point here friends that before we move on just because an adverse event doesn't rise to the level of security incident doesn't mean that you do not need to do anything cyber security team respond to adverse event all the time and make change to control that better define the organization the distinction is that unless there is a real or a certain violation of the security policy we do not need to go to trouble of activating the organization entire incident response plan we just handle these adverse event as a part of our day to day activity now that we have this terminology understood we can move on and dis discuss incident handling in more detail cyber security professionals must deal with a wide variety of threat as they plan and implement security controls conducting a threat analysis is an effective way to gauge the cyber security risk facing an organization during a threat analysis the cyber security team use professional expertise in the threat intelligence and other information source to develop a comprehensive list of threats facing the a list facing the organization once they have developed a list of threats then they evaluate these threats based on two criteria first they assess the likelihood of each threat this likelihood judgment incorporates the team opinion about how likely is that the threat will materialize and how likely it is that the threat will actually target their organization this likelihood rating may vary significantly from organization to organization for same threat for example consider consider the threat of an attack by a foreign government the likelihood of this threat may be very high for a defense contractor to maintain the sensitive military information but much lower for a restaurant chain that doesn't have any information of interest to that foreign government the second evaluation factor is the impact of the threat if it if it could materialize when we evaluate the impact of threat we take a number of factors into account I think some pop up comes, something just to. Uh, are you able to see my screen, yes? Yes, sir. And actually, okay. there is a little bit of noise coming. Uh, okay, maybe it's because of my fan. Just a second, let me just uh, turn off my fan. Just a second. hello yeah is that fine yeah it's better all right so uh, i was on a slide number 32 and i was talking about the likelihood of a threat right okay. so uh, let me just continue i don't know if i if i got uh, uh, disconnected in mid so i was talking about the second factor so the second evaluation factor is the impact of a threat if it should materialize when we evaluate the impact of a threat 
we take a number of factors into account for example we assess how much damage the threat could cause us if we are looking at threat of a hacking attack we might just the ability of those hacker to obtain and use sophisticated tools that are capable of bypassing our layers of security defense once we have these threat information compiled we can create a threat register that list all of the threat that we have identified and their likelihood and impact rating the register is very crucial when conducting security assessment and deciding whether to make investment in new security controls as you conduct your threat identification and the classification exercise is helpful to keep a classification matrix known as a johari window the johari window classifies information into categories based upon whether it is known to us and whether it's known to others this window has four quadrants in the context of cyber security threat there are known knowns these are threats that we know about and our adversaries know about as well publishing published vulnerabilities virus we know signature and brute force password attack all fit into this category of known known then there are known unknown these are threats that are known to us but not known to others for example we might have discovered a security vulnerability in our infrastructure that's not detectable from the outside and that attacker are not yet aware of the category of unknown knowns contain threats that are known to others but not to us for example if an attacker discover a new zero day security exploit but has not yet used it they know of a security threat but we have no way of knowing about the threat until the exploit is actually used or it's discovered independently by a third party finally there are unknown unknowns these are security threats that nobody has discovered yet every vulnerability that is discovered by researcher fit into this category before the time it's actually discovered there are many vulnerability out there that fit into this category there are security threats that we haven't yet discovered but they are they are silently waiting to reach the light of the day incident response program friends build an incident response plan while we strive to protect our systems and information against a wide variety of threat the reality is that no matter how many controls we put in place there is there is a still possibility that we uh, we will fail or we will fall victim to a security incident we must focus on using a standard set of practice endorsed by national institute for standard and technology that is nist if you would like more information on this process you can find a complete reference in the nest computer security incident handling guide it's published online as nest special publication 800-161 and this guide is widely used as a standard reference throughout the cyber security field every organization should develop a cyber security incident response plan that outlines the policies procedures and guidelines 
that the organization will follow when an incident takes place this process is extremely important because it provides a structure and organization in the heat of crisis i have been involved in many security incidents friends over the course of my career and when i think back and evaluate them in 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 in, in it's clear to me that all of the organization that handle incident will had one thing in common they had clearly thought through their incident response process and document in an advance of the incident on the other hand when i think about incident that did not go very well they typically occurred in organization that do not conduct prior planning in those organization i commonly heard the sentiment well we are going a crisis management and a security incident is not very likely we'll figure out the detail if it happens this approach of cyber security incident is a perfect recipe of failure because the reality is that people makes bad decisions in the heat of a crisis developing an incident response plan in advance of an incident taking place allow you to make decision in a calm environment of the planning phase and those decision then help you exercise good judgment in the heat of security incident a formalized incident response plan should include several common element first it should begin with a statement of purpose that's very important friends if somebody is preparing for any cyber security exam you have to understand very first thing even i'm just adding other than this slide i just uh, thought to add because that comes immediately in my mind if somebody is preparing for any cyber security uh, exam even especially writing a business case the very first thing should comes into mind is the need if need is clear half things will be done the half things is finance but there are some more more things that should consider in the in consider while writing the business cases but need is at most important so first thing it should begin with a statement of purpose what are the reason that organization that organization is creating an incident response plan and what is the scope of that plan what type of incident does the plan cover for example is the plan restricted to only cyber security incident or will it cover any loss of sensitive information as well second the plan should describe clear strategies and goal for the incident response effort what are the highest priority for first responder and those handling an incident at a more strategic level if responder should prioritize containment over evidence preservation make sure that's clearly mentioned in the plan the plan should also describe the nature of the organization's approach to incident response who bears the responsibility for incident handling and what authority do they have your incident response plan should cover communication with within the team with other group within the organization and with third parties we'll talk more about the incident communication process a uh, later in this slide and finally the plan should include the approval of senior management that is absolutely mandatory without this whatever the plan you have is not going to work that's for sure you might need that authority when taking unpopular actions during incident response if you can point to the plain and show an administrator that the policy require disconnection of a system was signed by the ceo that's going a long way friends as you develop your plan you should definitely consult nist special publication 800-161 this will help you uh, th this is a guide which help you for taking any decision you can just search uh, 
next special publication 800-61 you will get this this is pdf widely available i think in my upcoming slide i have mentioned the link also i forget to mention here but you will be getting the uh, the link in my upcoming slides next is incident communication plan one of the critical component of your incident response plan is communication plan that covers both internal and external communication those procedure help ensure that the appropriate people within your organization know about an incident at the right time and thus they are provided with accurate information communicating with individuals and group outside of your organization can be much trickier task you want to make sure that you are limiting the communication of sensitive information to trusted parties only this is particularly important when there might be public or media interest in an incident if words leak out without approval the incident might wind up in the news before your public relation team is ready to handle it this might also jeopardize the integrity of your investigation by alerting the attackers to the fact that you have discovered the incident and that an incident response effort is underway in most cases you are not under a legal obligation to report security incident to law enforcement and decision to do so is complex once your file once you file a report with law enforcement it is likely that the detail of incident will become public which may be undesirable also law enforcement officials are held to make held to much higher standard in gathering and processing evidence of course you should always contact law enforcement if you think there is a threat to safety or you have a legal obligation to report a specific kind of incident your legal team should be included in your incident response planning effort and they should provide with specific guidance about any law or regulation that apply to your organization and may require notification in the event of a security incident for example most state have privacy law on the books that require the timely notification of individuals when there is a, comp a compromise of personal information you also may have obligation under other law and regulation to notify government agencies private regulation bodies customers or the public about a specific type of incident depending on the impact and type of information involved your communication plan should not only describe who you will communicate with during an incident but should also describe how you will communicate make sure that you have secure communication channel in place before an incident occur this will provide you with a security mechanism to share information with trusted employee and with third parties using secure channel is prevent you, sorry using secure channel prevents the in advert release of information to public or to the advertisers as we mentioned few moments back incident identifications friends once you have an incident response plan in place and a team prepared the incident response process that enters a state of monitoring watching for signs that an incident is taking place or has already occurred there are many different ways that an organization might identify a security incident the key to successful incident identification is having a robust security monitoring infrastructure data is crucial to incident detection and organization have a responsibility to collect analyze and retain security information there are many different sources that may contribute data critical to identification and analyzing a possible security incident these incident 
intrusion detection and prevention system firewall authentication system system integrity monitoring vulnerability scanner system event log net flow connection records and anti malware packages amongst many other sources if id system do one thing well is generating a massive amount of log information security professionals are responsible for collecting and correlating this information unassisted that almost that almost an impossible undertaking fortunately security incident and event management or sim technologies can assist with this task sim systems act as centralized log repository and analysis solution security professional can take the fire hose of data they receive from security related logs and point them to sim which then do a heavy lifting and analysis work this system may detect possible incident based upon rules and algorithm bringing them to the attention of security administrator for further review they also provide a critical centralized information source to investigators pursuing a security incident we have friends just talked about many of the way that a security team might identify incident based upon the internal uh, generated data and in in the best case that's the way we detect incident but noticing the sign of an incident as it occur or shortly thereafter unfortunately some of these monitoring system fail to detect an incident and we first learn of a security compromise by hearing from employees customers or external organization who see the sign of a breach this might occur when a customer see his or her personal information posted on a web when a system on the corporate network began attacking begins attacking an external site due to command received from a botnet or when a employee notice that he or she cannot log in an email account the incident response team should have a consistent method for receiving recording and evaluating these external reports when a security professional identify a potential incident it is time to swing into incident response mode the team member who first notice an incident and other who may be on duty have a special first responder responsibility just as in a medical emergency the first person on the scene has the ability to have a tremendous impact on a successful response to a incident by acting quickly and uh, uh, to protect the organization first responder should act quickly to contain the damage from the security incident if they suspect there is a system or group of a system may compromise the first responder should immediately isolate that system from the rest of the network to contain the damage now depending upon the technical circumstances first responder may quarantine the system by removing it from the network keeping it running to preserve the evidence by cutting off the potential compromised system's ability to communicate with attackers or in fact other system on the corporate network effectively quarantining it this is a favorite topic of uh, security exams friends so you should understand that you remember a first responder's highest priority should be containing the damage by isolating affected systems escalations and notifications when a security professional detect a potential incident they should immediately swing into first responder mode acting to isolate affected system and contain the damage caused by the incident as soon as they have handled the immediate emergency they should move into incident escalation and notification process the escalation and notification process has several important objective first it evaluates the severity of the incident based upon the incident's potential impact on the organization security second it escalate the incident to 
an appropriate level of incident response finally it notify management and other and other stakeholder of the incident and plan to resolve it now after containing a, an incident the responder should begin a triage now triage process that identify the potential impact of the incident the process for rating incident severity should be found in the organization incident response procedure one common scheme use a three tiered scale of low impact moderate impact and high impact incident let's go one by one first low impact incident have minimal or no potential to affect the confidentiality integrity and availability of the information or system belonging to the organization in low impact incident the first responder would normally attempt to resolve the incident themselves and wait to call in additional resources or or perform notification until the incident escalate or is resolved low impact incident would not normally call for an after our responses moderate impact incident moderate impact incidents are more likely to have a significant impact on the organization security posture the occurrence of a moderate level incident normally triggers the full or partial activation of incident response team and prompt notification of management high impact incident high impact incident may cause critical damage to the to an organization and justify an immediate full response senior executive should be immediately notified and the entire incident response team should be mobilized member not needed for the immediate response should be informed that an incident response is underway and placed on standby status so in short uh, there is a involvement of complete team either that is required or not those those which are not must be on standby now the notification and escalation process will vary from organization to organization but the common theme is that this process must be clearly throughout and have appropriate tools in place at a minimum first responder should have access to the mobile phone number of anyone who may need to notify organization may choose to put in place a technology solution that automate the team response mitigation as a full incident response team uh, assembles they move from the isolation and quarantine strategy used by first responder into a full incident mitigation mode the goal of the the goal of this mitigation phase is controlling the damage and loss caused to the organization by performing a full range of incident containment activity the nature of these activity will vary based upon the severity of the incident the national institute of standard and technology suggests six criteria that a responder may use when evaluating a potential containment strategy first the responder should consider the potential for damage and theft for resource during the incident second they should evaluate the need of incident preservation and the effect that the strategy might have on the ability to preserve evidence third the responder should evaluate service availability requirement and the impact of different containment strategy on that service availability fourth the responder must understand the time and resource required to implement any process containment strategy fifth the responder should understand the expected effectiveness of the strategy will well in uh, the, this approach fully contains the incident or is it likely only a partial fix and finally responder must understand the length 
of the time that the solution will remain in place organization can use these criteria to help choose between different containment strategy the goal is to select a containment strategy that balance the business need of the organization with the security objective of incident response this is a tricky balance to strike and there is no certain answer incident responder will always need to use their best judgment and when possible seek into seek inputs from the management and other stakeholder once an organization begins implementing containment action the responder must keep in mind that attacker will likely detect the, those action and know the investigator are hot on their trail this may cause the attacker to speed up activity destroy evidence or perform other actions that are detrimental to the incident response or the organization business at the end of a containment process the organization should be a semi stable state responder should be a confident that the incident is over and there is no immediate danger to the organization business operation should be functioning at least on the limited basis although they may be although they may use temporary work around everything is generally okay and the organization is ready to move on to next step of the process recovery and uh, uh, reconstitution containment technique the first minute and hour of a cyber security incident are the in, are the incredibly stressful time and you have conducted some initial analysis and determine that an incident is taking place and you know that there is an intruder active in your network you have been compromised that's the fact and the next step that you take play a significant role in the outcome of the incident in the next incident handling process you have moved from detecting detecting and analyzing phase into containment eradication and recovery phase if you have done you your work well in the preparation phase this is where is payoff the biggest difference between the in the early phase and this phase is that you have shifted from passive active of detection and analysis into an active phase where you are taking action in response to the incident your first priority should be containing the damage caused by the incident you want to limit the future activity of the attacker so that they they cannot do further damage to or to the confidentiality integrity and availability of your system for network there are three primarily activity uh, that you can perform to contain the damage of security incident segmentation isolation and removal segmentation is a crucial network security technique network administrator often use segmentation to divide network into logical segments grouped by types of user or system this is a staple of network security design and is found on almost every network segmentation is also useful in incident response once you realize that one or more systems are compromised you may wish to contain the spread of attack from those systems without altering the attacker to the fact that you have detected their activity to perform the containment you create a new virtual lan called quarantine lan and move impacted system to the quarantine vlan from there you can set up access controls that prevent the compromised systems for from communicating with other system in your network and spreading the attack isolation takes segmentation to next level instead of simply moving the compromised system to a, a different vlan that is still attached to the corporate network compromised systems are moved to network that is completely disconnected from the rest of the network depending upon the isolation strategy used the system may still be able to communicate with each other and are still connected to the internet so that they can communicate with the attackers and finally removal complete disconnect impacted system from any network they are completely unable to communicate with other systems or the internet and the attacker is cut off from the access to the systems this approach 
will certainly alert the attacker to the fact that attack was detected but it does prevent the compromise system from con from continuing to cause damage on the network incident eri incident eradication and recovery once you have successfully contained the security incident you can take a moment to breathe a sign of relief but the work of incident response has only just begun you have managed to contain the damage caused by the incident but now you must move on to the eradication and recovery stage of the process your goal during eradication is to remove any traces of the incident from your system and network if an attacker compromise your account you will need to secure those accounts if they compromise system or network devices you will need to secure those configuration as well basically you will, you need to go to your network and remove all or any traces of the security incident so that you can be certain that you have effectively secure your organization the second goal you have during this stage of process is recovery that means that you need to restore normal business operation while the process describe eradication or recovery as two separate activity they are very closely linked the reality is that eradication and recovery activities often take place side by side it's sometimes difficult to say whether an activity you are understanding should be classified as eradication or recovery and frankly it doesn't really matter during many security incidents attacker gain user or administrative level access to one or more systems or devices on your network is often difficult to tell how much access they gain and what backdoors they might installed therefore security professionals consider is a best practice to reconstruct any system that were compromised during a security incident the reconstruction typically consists of rebuilding or reimaging a machine or doing a rest uh, sorry or doing a reset to factory default or network devices and applications friends this is again one of the very important concept you have must understood that in case of any compromise you must have to do a factory reset because you never know if there is any traces left all right so performing reconstruction in this matter in this manner ensured that the attacker didn't leave a hidden backdoor in the system that allow them to regain access once you resume normal operation so factory reset is most recommended now when you are rebuilding a system remember that you may need to build in differently that you did in the past because that was compromised if an attacker compromises a system you should understand how they compromised it if you are missing a security patches make sure that you apply the patch before bringing the system back online if the user account were compromised make sure that they are secure before you go live if you rebuild a system using a pre attack image you will likely to have a same security vulnerability that allow the attacker to fake to take place in the in the first place and might find yourself repeating the incident response process in next few hours only friends sanitization and secure disposals are also important incident response activity you may find yourself needing to dispose of media that contains sensitive information and you should take a step to ensure that you have removed any traces or sensitive information before disposing of media the national institute of standard in technology provide a set of guidance for securing media sanitization in a special publication h100-88 this guide include three different activation activities of sanitization technique and it consists simple of writing new data to the device that overwrite sensitive data 
these techniques are first clearing clearing is effective against most type of casual analysis purging is simple is a similar to clearing but it use more advanced technique that takes longer purging might be might use cryptographic functions to obscure media or disk purging also include the use of technique that applies strong magnetic field to secure overwrite data destruction destruction is the ultimate type of data sanitization sanitization you shred you melt or otherwise completely destroy the media that is totally impossible for someone to reconstruct the data that is contained the downside of destruction of course is that you cannot reuse the media as you would uh, with clearing or purging now here is a flow chart from the nist that can help you make decisions about what type of sanitation technique to use it widely used throughout government or industry you begin the flow chart at one of three locations depending upon the classification of information that was on the media then you can walk through a series of discussion point based upon whether you plan to reuse the media or whether that uh, reuse will take uh, place outside of your organization the flow chart then help you make a decision about clearing purging or destroying the media now the most important point lesson learned once the incident response team returns the organization to a normal oper operating state all too often the response effort ends without completing an and important and final step state final step sorry conducting a lesson learned session and writing up the result in an incident report the lesson learned process is designed to provide everyone involvement in the incident uh, response effort and and opportunity to reflect on their individual role in the incident and team response overall is an opportunity to improve the process and and technologies used in incident response to better respond to future crises the most common way to conduct lesson learn is to gather everyone in the same room or connect them via teleconferencing or video conferencing and ask trained facilitator to lead a lesson learn session ideally this facilitator should have played no role in the incident response leaving him or her with no notions and no uh, uh, pre convinced uh, sorry pre conceived notions about the response the facilitator should be a neutral party who simply help guide the conversation time is of the essence with a lesson learned session because as time passes detailed quickly become fuzzy and memories are lost the most quickly you conduct a lesson learned session the most likely is it that you will receive valuable feedback that contain help guide in future responses next offer a series of question to use in the lesson learned process they include exactly what happened and at what time how well did his staff and management perform in dealing with the incident where documented procedure followed where those procedure adequate where any steps or action taken that might have inhibited of the recovery what would the staff and management do differently the next time a similar incident occur how could information sharing with other organization have been improved what corrective action can prevent similar incident in future what precursors or indicator should be watched for the future to detect similar incident and what additional tool or resource are needed to detect analyze and mitigate future incidents the response to these questions if given honestly will give valuable insight into the into the state of the organization incident response plan they can help provide a road map of future movement 
designed to more in uh, a sophisticated security program the lesson learned facilitator should work with the team leader to document the lesson learned to lesson learned in a report that in that include suggested process improvement action as you make the improvement identify during your lesson learned process remember to follow your organization's change management procedure and to update your incident response plan as needed you want to make sure that all of your changes are appropriately tested approved and documented finally friends in addition to your lesson learn you have to make a lesson learn report you should also prepare an incident summary report this is more technical document that details the circumstances surrounding the breach and all the steps taken by responder during the incident response process the incident summary report create valuable institutional knowledge that may be used during future incidents and training process now i am moving to business continuity planning friends business continuity planning is one of the core responsibility of the information security professional uh megna uh, is it like uh, we are running out of time because uh, i have almost uh, 30 more slides or shall i go ahead um, no sir we i think we can go for another 8 10 minutes all right i will try to finish and it then uh, we can... yes sir we can go for I... another 8 to 10 minutes and then we will start with the question answer round all right do you have any questions so far yes sir we do have quite a lot of questions all right okay so let me just quickly uh, uh, com complete as much as i can in next 10 to 15 minutes and then probably we can take that sure sir right all right so business continuity planning is one of the core responsibility of the information security profession business continuity efforts are a collection of activity designed to keep a business running in the face of adversity this adversity may come in form of a small scale incident such as a single system failure or a catastrophic incident such as an earthquake or tornado business continuity plan may also be activated by man made disaster such as terrorist attack or hacker intrusion while many organization plays responsibility for business continuity with operational engineering team business continuity is a core security concept because it is the primary control that support in the security objective of availability remember that's one of the big three objective of information security confidentiality integrity and availability when an organization begin a business continuity effort it's easy to quickly become overwhelmed by many possible scenarios and controls that the project might consider for this reason the team develop a business continuity plan and that should take a uh, time up front to carefully define their scope what business activity will be covered by the plan what type of system will it cover what type of control will it consider the answer to these question will help to make critical prioritization decision down the road continuous planner use a tool known as a business impact and assessment or bia sometimes we can say business impact analysis as well to help these tools basically help make a, a certain decision the bia is a risk assessment that follow one of the quantitative or qualitative scores uh, processes the bia begin by identifying the organization's critical business process and then tracing those backward to the critical it systems that support those processes once planner have identified the affected it system they then identify the affected it system they then 
identify the potential risk to those systems and conduct the risk assessment the output of the business impact assessment is prioritizing listing of risk as risk that might disrupt the organization business such as the one shown here planner can then use this information to help select control that mitigate the risk facing the organization within the acceptable ex uh, expense limit for example notice that risk in the scenario are listed in descending order of expected loss it makes sense to place the highest priority on addressing the risk at the top of the list damage to the for example uh, uh, hurricanes damage to the data center but the organization must then make decision about control implementation that factor in cost for example if a fifty thousand dollar flood prevent system would reduce the risk of hurricanes damage to the data center by 50 percent purchasing the system is clearly a good decision because it has an expected payback period of less than one year business continuity control business continuity professional have a variety of tools at the disposal to help remediate potential available issue one of the critical ways that it professionals protect the availability of the system is to ensure that they are redundant the simple means that system are designed in such a way that the failure of single component doesn't bring the entire system down business can continue in the face of single predictable failure the single point of failure analysis process provides security professionals with a mechanism to identify and remove single point of failure from their system let's look at an example here we can have a simple web based application a web server protected by a firewall and connected to a to the internet as we conduct a single point of failure analysis we might first notice that the web server itself is a single point of failure if any anything goes wrong with the server the web service will stop functioning we can correct the situation by replacing the single web server with a cluster form of server that are designed to provide web service the cluster is designed so that if a single server fails the other server may continue providing service without disruptions once we have implemented the cluster we have removed the server as a single point of failure next we might turn our attention to the firewall another single point of failure in this scenario if the firewall goes goes down internet user will not be able to reach the web server rendering the web service unavailable therefore the firewall is also a single point of a failure we can correct the situ situation by replacing the firewall with a pair of a high availability of a firewalls where one server as a backup device stands is standing by a uh, by to step in immediately if the primary firewall fails by replacing the single firewall with a high availability pair we have removed the firewall as a single point of a failure but we still have yet another single point of failure the internal and external network connections as with a web server and firewall we can uh, as uh, as with a web server and firewall we can a single point of failure by introducing redundancy and having two separate network for each link if one fails the service may continue to operate over the others the single point of a failure analysis may continue on identifying and remedying issues until either the team is stop finding new issues or the cost of single point of failure analysis is important part of the organization's continuity of operations planning effort organization should also consider the other risk facing their it operations as they conduct it contingency planning 
they should not only consider the single point of failure but all of the other situations the, uh, that might jeopardize business continuity for example this might include sudden bankrupt of a key vendor or the inability to provide computing or storage capacity needed by the business or even utility service failure or any other risk that IT management believe may disrupt operation one final component of business continuity planning that is often overlooked is personal succession planning information security technology depends upon a high skilled team member who de who develop configure who develop configure and maintain system and processes it leadership should work with human resources to identify those team member who are essential to continue operation and identify potential successor for those positions that's why when someone leaves the organization management has have already thought through potential replacement and hopefully provide those successor with the professional development opportunities they need to step in the departing employees shoes uh, it's already 8 11 i will be shall i start disaster recovery uh, it won't be much megna yes sir uh, shall uh, i go ahead for the disaster recovery? we have a time i mean shall it go for five more minutes or is it fine to take the question uh, so if you want you can go ahead all right so let me continue yeah thanks uh yeah so regarding disaster recovery business continuity program are designed to keep a business up and running in the fact of a disaster but unfortunately they don't always work sometimes continuity controls fail or the sheer magnitude of disaster overwhelm the organization's capacity to continue operations that's where disaster recovery begins disaster recovery is a subset of business continuity activity designed to restore a business to normal operation as quickly as possible following a disruption the disaster recovery plan may include immediate measures that get operations up and running again temporarily but the disaster recovery effort is not finished until the organization is completely back to normal operation the initial response following an emergency disruption is designed to contain the damage to the organization and recover whatever capacity may be immediately restored the activities during the initial response will will vary widely depending upon the nature of the disaster and may include activity and alternate uh, processing facility containing physical damage or calling in contractor to begin an emergency response during a disaster recovery effort the focus of most of the organization shift from normal business activity to a concentrated effort to restore operation as quickly as possible from the staffing perspective this means that many employees will be working in temporary jobs that may be completely different from their normal assigned duties flexibility is key during a disaster responses also the organization should plan out disaster responsibility as much as possible in advance and provide employee with training that prepare them to do their part during disaster recovery communication is critical to disaster recovery effort responding uh, responder must have secure reliability means to communicate with each other and with the organization's leadership the communication includes the initial communication required to activate the disaster recovery process even if the disaster occur after business hour it also include regular status update for both employee in the field and leadership it and it should include ad hoc communication capability to meet tactical needs 
after the immediate danger to the organization clear the disaster recovery team shift from immediate response mode into assessment mode the goal of uh, this phase is simple to trace the damage to the organization and develop a plan to the recover or to recover of organization on a permanent basis in some circumstances this may also include intermediate steps that restore operation temporarily on the way to permanent recovery there are two metrics used to help an organization plan disaster recovery effort the recovery time objective or we called as a rto is a targeted amount of time that it will take to restore a service to operation following a disruption the organization must also think about the amount of data that it need to restore as well and thus rec the recovery point objective or rpo is this is the maximum time period from which data may be lost as a result of a disaster together the rto and rpo provide valuable information to disaster recovery planner after developing a plan responder then execute the plan restoring operations in an orderly fashion friends remember the disaster recovery effort only conclude when the organization is back to normal operation in the primary facility training and awareness efforts are critical component of a disaster recovery plan that's a very important concept for all the students who are preparing for security uh, certification this is one of the very important point let me read it again training and awareness efforts are i would say one of the uh, one of the very critical way and that that we need to do on a regular basis right so training and awareness efforts are critical component of a disaster recovery plan all personnel involved in disaster recovery effort should receive training about their role in the plan on a periodic basis and also engage in more frequent awareness program designed to keep their disaster recovery responsibility top of mind hey by the way friends do you know uh, october month is for what with respect to the cyber security just google it or somebody can uh, uh, post in the chat then uh, that will be fine next one will be disaster recovery sites this is also one of my favorite topic disaster recovery site right so during a disaster organization may need to shift their computing functions from their primary data center to an alternate facility designed to carry the load when the primary site is unavailable or non functioning disaster recovery sites are alternate processing facility is specifically designed for this purpose most of the time they sit idle waiting to step in when an emergency situation arises there are three main type of alternate processing facility hot site cold site and warm site hot site hot sites are the premier form of disaster recovery facility they are fully operational data center that have all the equipment and data required to handle operation ready to run the technology staff can activate the hot site at a moment notice and in and in many cases the hot site will actually activate itself if primary sites fail this provide an unparalleled level of redundancy but it also comes at great price is a very expensive the cost of building and maintaining the hot site are typically similar to those of running the primary data center you are doubling your cost to achieve tremendous recovery capability cold site cold sites on the other hand are facilities that may be used to restore operations eventually but with a significant investment of time they are essentially empty data centers they have the core racks cabling network connections and environmental controls necessary to support data center operations but 
they don't have the servers or data required to restore business operations cold sites are far less expensive than hot sites but activating them may require weeks or even months of effort warm sites warm sites are compromised they don't have a hardware and software necessary to support the company's operations but they are not kept running in the parallel fashion the hardware cost are the same as the hot side but warm side require much less investment of time from it staff activating a warm side may takes hours or days depend upon the circumstances disaster recovery sites not only provide a facility or technology operations but they also serve and serve as an off-site storage location for business data backing up business data is important and storing those backups in a security in a secure facility that is geographically distance from the primary facility provide added assurance that the same disaster will not damage both the primary facility and the backups backups may be physical transported to disaster recovery sites on a periodic basis or they may be transferred digitally using uh, a process known as electronic vaulting now this is a very important point where you require to test bcp bc and disaster recovery plan disaster recovery plan are critical to ensuring the continuity of business operations as with any security controls disaster recovery plan should be tested to ensure that the plan functions properly and will be ready to restore the business operation in the event of a disruption each test of disaster recovery plan has two goals first it validates that the plan functions correctly and that disaster recovery technology will work in the event of an actual disaster second the disaster recovery test provides an opportunity to identify necessary update to the plan due to technology or business process changes let's talk about five type of disaster recovery testing read through walk through simulation parallel test and full interruption test let's go one by one read through read through are the simplest form of disaster recovery testing they are also known as checklist review in this approach disaster recovery staff dis, uh, distributed copies of the current plan to all personnel involved in disaster recovery efforts and ask those personnel to review their procedure team member then provide feedback about any update need to keep the plan current walk through go to uh, go a step further and involve getting everyone together around the same table to review the plan for this reason a walk through is also known as a table top exercise walk through achieve the same result as read through but are generally more effective because they give the team the uh, team the opportunity to discuss the plan together the next level of disaster recovery testing is simulation test as with a six a structured walk through simulation pull the disaster recovery team together in the same room the difference is that in simulation they are not just talking about the plan itself they are discussing how they will respond to a specific scenario the test planner design a simulation of an emergency situation and then the disaster recovery team describe how they would react the three type of uh, sorry the three test types we have discussed so far read through walk through and simulation are all theoretical exercise they talk about disaster recovery but don't actually use any disaster recovery technologies the parallel test goes beyond this and actually activates the disaster recovery plan bringing up a hot or warm site in response to simulated disaster the company doesn't actually switch operation to the alternate site but the alternate site run in parallel to the primary site the final test 
the full interruption test is the most effective type of disaster recovery testing but it is up but it is also the most disruptive to normal operations the business simulate a disaster by actually shutting down the primary site and attempting to operate out of the alternate facility this type of test will highlight any deficiency in the plan but may also have an adverse effect on the business for this reason full interruption tests are rare in practice oh sorry i forget to uh, uh, move the slide so this is uh, this slide is uh, for full interruption test what i just mentioned disaster recovery testing disaster recovery testing strategy often use a combination of different test types organization might conduct a regular read through and walk through of the plan and then supplement those walk through and read through with periodic simulation and parallel test each test type brings different advantages and help the organization become better prepared for an actual disaster so friends let me take the break here i think that's all from uh, my side uh, megna you may uh, go ahead for the questions yes sir so if you could please switch on your webcam yes just a second just give me a second i think is disconnected okay uh this is hello yes sir can i yeah are you able to see uh my camera no, no okay just Share my I think this should work now. Okay, yes, we can see you. I'm visible. Yes. Uh, okay, so we are really sorry that uh, it the question answer round has been delayed a little, but I really hope uh, you all I'm can. So sorry your for this one. That's absolutely fine, sir. Okay, so let's start. So the first question we have is from Lalit Vazirani, and he has asked. how is the list of threats different from a threat reg register <coughs> really sorry how is the list of a threat from threat register different? yeah there is no difference i mean i didn't get the question see threat okay so do you want me to explain the threat or threat register what's the difference right yes hi lalit thank you for uh, posting the question so first of all threat is something which which may or may impact the uh, 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 or which may lead to the risk now if we put this threat in a list that will help us to identify if that threat uh, may convert to a risk right for example my uh, home is near uh, uh, near a sea we could have uh, 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 we could have a, uh, a wind storm so that some water may comes uh, inside my house as well but the probability is very less so there is a threat i am staying near the sea that is a threat but it may chances that there are chances that in mumbai especially in navi mumbai what are the chances that this kind of a uh, 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 wind storm comes so that the power is that much that it that may uh, that this uh, 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 this sea water comes into my home so these kind of a things we put in our threat list we prioritize using two ways one is quantitative and one is qualitative we sit together with a team and analyze this risk there are certain ways and that we discuss with our senior management and if you are talking about any business then we discuss the business leader a business head of that particular unit and they decide what kind of a control we should or should not use and that may lead to 
uh, uh, go for any implementing of a cyber security solution but again that will so these all things will will decide once we jot down what kind of a threat we have and for that we have a threat register hope i'm able to answer the question mr lalit yes uh, okay so is it, next is, it, Megna, is it possible if i can talk also just in case i i just want to confirmation or if may if they have some further queries anyway you can go ahead for the next question please yeah okay so our next question is from malini rao and she has asked if i am a global company do i involve law enforcement agencies globally or only of one country uh, her name is sorry i missed that malini hi malini thank you so much for posting the question see it depends upon your organization if it's a multinational company then you need to consider the multi uh, countries laws or regulations they are following for example if in case your company is in just uh, uh, less in india then you need to follow the laws and regulation what you have in india but if you your company's branches or head office in outside of some uh, let's say india or uh, maybe in singapore or some other countries then you also need to consider the laws what uh, what we call as a law of the land especially i am talking about privacy companies have different laws regulation consequences depends upon the uh, uh, country to country so that is i mean this question is really uh, uh, i appreciate because this is one of the favorite question when you are giving the security exam you need to understand and uh, let me give uh, uh, maybe you can google it or you can just go through the what's the meaning of decentralized or centralized process right maybe i can cover in in my next uh, uh, session or something but this is linked with decentralized and centralized and also i would suggest go uh, uh, go through the advantage and disadvantage of decentralized and centralized so that will give you a complete idea about uh, law of the land hope i am able to answer your question malini yes okay so i see that we have a few raised hands and okay. uh, i would like to unmute sachin nayar please go ahead with your question sachin nayak hi sachin nayar how are you i am not able to hear anything uh, uh, probably you uh, probably you can post uh, on a whats and sorry on the text on the chat uh, okay it's absolutely fine uh, we also have akash hi akash how are you just a second Okay, I don't think even he is being able to. No problem. Is there any way I can see the chat? Because uh, I'm not sure if I'm able to. See. No, I don't think so. Okay, Vijay, ha? Huh? No you could go ahead. Hi, Vijay. How are you? My bad luck. I am not getting uh, audio. Guys, maybe okay, you can post sure on the chat, and uh, Megna will help to ask question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have more question. Actually, I saw the raised hand, so I thought that we could have a interactive session first. Okay. Anyway, our next question is from Vijay Kumar, and he has asked, "What is the best way to isolate infected machine?" Hi, Vijay. How are you? First of all, thank you so much for asking this question. That is uh, totally okay. I can let 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 uh, let me answer this question in two ways. first of all is depends upon the organization incident response plan if they want to analyze further even after knowing that incident is in place then what other things they should consider now here you also need to consider that system or that server is critical if that's the critical then of course you really would do not want to you know transfer anything or 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 any type of communication with hacker you simply and plug the network sometimes it depends i mean it's written that you just turn off the system but the problem here is you may lose the temporary memory evidence that is very important sometimes so depends upon the organization uh, 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 policy what they have mentioned in their incident uh, re uh, response plan so this totally depends upon uh, those things also the most important thing which i want to highlight here is whenever you are doing such kind of a thing as i mentioned in one of my side also the most important thing is you have 
to make sure that your server your business your uh, uh, containment is in place your security is on top most right that's why you have to do a regular test you have to do a regular practice of doing incident uh, 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 incident and practicing of incident response plan that you have uh, made after discussing with all the stakeholders from the business from the board of directors from the different stakeholder meeting or something so that's how you need to always uh, you know update your incident response plan so my i mean uh, if i want to answer in chris it totally depends upon the incident response plan you may switch off the function uh, that the server you may disconnect uh, the uh, uh, the land the land cable you may provide some you may you may uh, you know just observe what kind of uh, 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 what exactly this guy is like looking for that too depends upon if the server is critical or no because you do not want to do these kind of things if the server is critical right so it totally depends upon these factors hope i am able to answer your question okay i hope that answers your question vijay okay so our next question is from vipul mehta and he has asked vipul what mehta. is the difference sorry yeah is vipin mehta no vipul mehta vipul oh, yeah yeah Please, he has asked what is the difference between incident and a breach incident and breach yes okay that's interesting okay so incident happen when something goes uh, goes wrong i mean disaster already happen you know that incident is there breach what i what i understood is breach is something that uh, there is a certain boundary that you know if you cross that uh, uh, that border then you may breach certain policy that may breach certain standard which may or may not know so in an whole if i say incident is something which which could be an uh, uh, event which could be a security event that may be legitimate or not that totally depends upon certain factor which i mentioned in our uh, one of the slide but in breach you know what to do and what not to do and we should not breach uh, uh, certain things because we have to comply with the policy standard procedure guideline as per the company or the as per the organization norms Thanks, Vipul. Okay. Thanks for asking the question. Oh. Okay, just a second. Um, okay, Vijay Kumar, I see that you have raised your hand. If you could please unmute yourself and ask the question. Vijay Kumar, I think second question. Yeah, go ahead. I think earlier we had one Vijay Kumar also. I can see there is a red icon of the chat. I don't know. Uh, I'm not able to see the complete message. But anyway. Okay, I don't think he is being able to unmute himself. Maybe. Okay, so first of all, I would also like to uh, to the question about what is the uh, uh, what is October month uh, celebrated as. there are a lot of people who have answered in the chat box and said that wow. it's the october is the month of cyber security awareness month awesome awesome okay can can, can you just uh, megna i i personally request if you can just name those person i really want to appreciate those okay. guys they are uh, the actually cyber security okay sure the people who have answered are rahul jain divya singh uh, praveer kumar sinha rahul jain okay thank you so much you are okay. uh, i will I, i'm clapping for you guys for every guys if you have uh, 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 not uh, uh, you know uh, gone through on this october month please have a look this is for us right we are the whole soul warriors so uh, go ahead and find out what is the what is october is for but anyway thank you so much guys for all your responses okay yes. so uh, another question that we have is from sandeep kotalwar i'm really sorry if i pronounced your name wrong but he has asked what are the types of dr tests sorry what are what are the type of dr tests dr test disaster recovery test okay uh 
yeah hi sandeep thank you so much for asking the question so sir so depends upon see there are certain tests which you want to do in uh, you know while uh, uh, while having your uh, services running what you called as a uh, when complete shutdown of the uh, of the system right so for example we have a parallel test where you want to test the systems when uh, your existing business is working and that and that time you uh, you want to uh, uh, test the uh, uh, the existing uh, uh, disaster recovery test hello yes sir. Uh, just a second just a second i think somebody is yeah so i think that is one of the test another one is where you want to i mean is you require to shut down the business uh, uh, completely i think this is what i have just covered in in my last few slides if i'm not wrong so maybe i would say you can just have a look uh, uh, once this video is available so in the last section i have mentioned explicitly on that so uh, i was talking about uh, see one of the test is where you shut down the complete uh, uh, the business and test what will be the uh, how your system is uh, responding how uh, your how effective is the incident uh, response plan that's one another one will be where you partially shut down the systems and at that time you are going to see if uh, uh, if uh, things are working as per your plan or no another one will be uh, as if i'm correctly remember is about uh, uh, read through where you you have a checklist you went through the complete uh, disaster recovery plan and uh, uh, and try to see if things are correct or no i mean that that will be the initial phase next one will be the walk through where uh, uh, you just uh, uh, you know sit down with uh, all the stakeholder especially those action heroes who are working with the incident response plan closely and try to discuss those things next one will be the simulation where you actually simulate the disaster recoveries so so these are the different phases and i am sure i have explained this extensively i think uh, before question answer session maybe 5 minutes ago hello hello am i yes sir uh, okay. yes yes sir. Oh, i thought i will so hope uh, mm -hmm. i answered your question uh, that yeah. is uh, mr atul uh, i am sorry sandeep thanks sandeep thanks yeah. for asking the question okay so actually we have exceeded the time by 10 minutes so sir i would like to ask you if you permit we have a few more questions i would ask them as well i have no issue please go ahead okay definitely okay so our next question is from gopala krishnan and he has asked can you define what kind of security must be in the startups must be in the startups must be in the startups yes okay uh, actually this is a very broad question i mean uh, what kind of a safety security if you have so again that depends upon what the uh, what kind of uh, uh, the, the the organization is all about right uh, if broadly I, I i would say security could be of physical security physical uh, security could be of uh, 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 the asset right so let me answer the question in a way that whatever the organization you have we should follow a, a guideline a framework right and the framework could be customized depends upon the organization to organization you can refer covid 5 you can refer iso and also uh, you can refer to our nist guideline that will help you to understand the different security framework see framework is basically a skeleton that will help you to at least give a basic thing you must have if you are in a startup company right and uh, uh, you, uh, and, the, and the very primary thing is what you have to understand you have you must know the asset you are having you have to identify all the assets asset means it could be your hardware it could be uh, the humans it could be uh, 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 the communication method i mean what kind of uh, things uh, uh, you are passing i mean on what ways if a routers or switches so all these things you have to note down and you have to create an asset register and based on that what i mean how critical that asset is now criticality is defined not on the basis of a price your router could cost let's say 1000 rupees but his uh, 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 his activity is actually transmitting the data that is of uh, a cost of lakhs 
so you have to uh, uh, actually understand the asset actual value so these are the few things which you can consider as a part of a security see i mean in the last i would say you have to have a correct business case to understand the need remember friends this is a word i have used during my session you have to understand the need of security then you can think if it's actually required for your system or, or of your organization or no so these are different ways these are system uh, certain standards which help you to establish the security information security governance or program either is a startup or established company hope i am able to answer your question mr yeah i hope name. that answers your question gopal gopal okay yeah. so uh, okay so our next question is from vishal ojha and he okay. has asked how often does a company need to do a mock dr testing yeah hi gopal thank you so much for asking the question first of all is totally i mean in if you ask me as per the book is on regular basis that too depends the frequency depends upon the how critical the business is few uh, the question is about business dr right so people may follow uh, uh, to do this in a yearly basis however if there is any major change happened during the mid of the season then they may go ahead for uh, 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 test or simulate that disaster recovery uh, uh, session uh, uh, in a mid also but ideally i mean uh, uh, this is a yearly plan and these things you can find it in it while doing the business impact analysis and one more thing there is an alternate way of doing the business impact analysis is to identify what are the dependent asset or dependent information security things you have for that particular uh, uh, site so these are the two ways you can find it out and based on that you can find out the frequency okay i hope yes. that answered your question vishal Uh, okay so our next question is from santosh and he has asked how to rate the incident as high or medium in case of cyber incidents which is not fully known to us which uh, sorry i just missed the last word which is not fully known to us uh i'm sorry uh, can you just please repeat the question how to identify yeah, the i repeat the question how to yeah. rate the incident as high or medium in case of a cyber incident which is not fully known to us which is not fully known to us okay uh okay so let me understand the question not fully known to us is means we know partially i'm, I'm just presuming santosh so if we know the partial uh, uh, uh incident or the partial incident may be it may happen uh, uh, in the uh, similar organization uh, similar organization or with your competitors right so in that case very first thing you should understand the your existing security procedure your existing setup right i'm considering here that you know the partial incident process right you know there is there something happen in your competitors company competitor organization so based on that if that thing happen then what will be the consequences what will be the impact on your organization for example uh, let me try to explain this by giving an example for example uh, uh, you are in telecom sector and uh, your uh, partner is also in telecom sector but you got to know that uh, there is an attack happen that uh, Uh, uh maybe on a festive season uh, people are unable to call to anyone right because of uh, some attack network got jam now for that you need to understand what are the mitigation controls or what are the controls in your uh, organization already have do we have intrusion detection system do we have a monitoring uh, uh, systems in place do we have a system who give the alert that to on correct time i mean uh, the accuracy of uh, alert is also correct and how we can uh, handle this kind of situation so based on this 
you can identify the severity criticality of that particular threat if that could materialize right so so this is a few things a uh, few ways you can uh, uh, you know uh, rate your uh, uh, threat by the way threat is not a risk right so if you know just about threat threat uh, is not a risk a risk i mean threat when it uh, 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 when there is probability of mitigating that uh, of uh, uh, of happening that threat is high then it may convert to risk so alone threat is not to worry you just need to keep an eye hope i am okay, able to answer I mr santosh third question and the last yes. question for today's session is can you explain the difference between rto and rpo perfect that is awesome question see recovery time objective recovery time is objective is the uh, is a time itself says that how much time your company your business sustain if disaster happen right for example if there is a, any any thunderstorm and uh, there is a no power supply in my uh, in my organization then i can say my recovery time objective is let's say 1 hour because i know uh, my my inverters my my generators are there who can help me uh, or who can make my business uninterrupted for 1 hour but what happen after 1 hour then that may goes to a a critical or maybe that again depends upon company to company that may go that may leads to a disaster so in that case my rto is 1 hour recovery time objective is 1 hour now how about rpo recovery point objective see if let, let me take the same example if in the same case how much data if in case losses then it won't impact my business for example if there is any transition happening let's say in pos then i do not want any kind of outage because maybe someone is swiping his credit card right they may claim that hey i i swiped for 10 10000 bucks but it's not uh, uh, you know reflecting though my amount is been deducted from my bank like that so in that case we have a zero tolerance so in that case our rpo will be zero but if in case uh, uh, there is a uh, 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 there is an organization where they can say oh, hey uh, i mean my uh, my application or my server is just to uh, uh, gather the information about the uh, uh, resources so that's fine i mean if if today we don't uh, get any data then probably uh, we can take it tomorrow so my uh, i'm fine if if we don't have data till 24 hours so in that case organization Uh, capacity is to lose data for 24 hours right so in that case rpo will be 24 hours so that's how rto and rpo works and this will help the organization to prioritize the uh, 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 the way the uh, this any any asset uh, should be recovered so recovery time for uh, for the recovering of any asset in case of a disaster uh, uh, in case of a disaster will help uh, rto and rpo will help in case of uh, recovery recovering of any disaster i'm sorry for last minute uh, i just got two three words uh, comes in my mind so i just got confused so in short rto and rpo helps to determine what to do first and that is a very closely working what we called as a business impact analysis okay that is one of the so, important key thank yeah. you very much sir and with that we have come to an end of the session uh, so first of all thank you so much sir it was a very informative session and uh, i'm really sorry if there are some questions which have been left unanswered you all can reach to us and we will send the questions to sir and he can uh, respond uh, apart from that thank you so much once again sir for coming here it was a pleasure we would like to join again for sure 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 thank you so much megna thank you so much everybody 
and i will i'm clapping for everyone for staying till i mean we have extended our almost two hours of uh, this video now this session now so thank you so much for joining me and staying with me answering uh, i mean asking the question that was actually awesome i mean i feel very happy you, you people have asked so many very interesting questions and uh, I, i'm looking looking forward to have a few more sessions with you guys so thank you so much and uh, it's all pleasure of mine to be a part of a cyber uh, cyber fred company so uh, we'll continue to do this thank you so much megna thank you so much of course. of course and everyone else really really thank you for staying with us i know that we have extended our stay for like around around 25 minutes but really thank you for staying and asking your questions and uh, thank you everyone have a great evening ahead thank you yeah great evening bye bye take care bye